Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where we are. Um, I hope I find everybody well. Appreciate everybody uh, giving us some time uh, this fine day to have a look at uh, some Mastercam functionality. I'm David Conigliero, and I'm here. Um, I'm here with Chad Chamara, and um, we're going to spend some time looking at the model champ for Toolpath today. And then we will segue into some solid chaining. And it's just two topics, but we have a chance here to go pretty deep and talk about some of the behaviors and some of the subtleties. Uh, and hopefully you can leave with a better understanding of, um, of, of how the model chamfered toolpath works, how it thinks. And uh, maybe you'll learn something new about some of the changes we've made uh, to solid chaining. It's gone over many changes over the last few releases. So I'll go through you know, some things you might already know about and maybe hopefully some things you don't know about. So let's start uh, and talk about the model champ for Toolpath. And that Toolpath, if you don't know about it, is right here. And it has the ability to create a chamfer on a solid model with a gouge-free lead-in, lead-out and gouge-free intelligent linking. It, it is a, a model-aware Toolpath. So conceptually, I'll just use this simple block. Uh, so I have a simple block. I want to put a chamfer on this front edge, and obviously that's uh, you know a condition where you can run into trouble with these vertical walls here. So a traditional 2D contour chamfer where we chain that edge, and then we go in and we set up our 2D contour into chamfer mode. We request the size of the chamfer, and we can control where the tool path runs along that chamfer face. We can offset from the top of the tool or the bottom. We have nice control here. And well, I'll lead in, lead out. You know, my depth set to zero, which is the location of the chain. And we get a result. And that's how it's always been done. But the problems that we can run into with that are, are gouge issues. So if I put my tool, and run along here, you can see that I'd be smacking my part right there. And so that's not going to work because this toolpath just looks at the chain, it machines the, the entire chain and adds a lead in move. Now, I can remedy that because, you know, Mastercam always has many, many settings to tweak things in, and I can adjust the start and the end by shortening it by some value, maybe point and I'll match that over to the end and regenerate. And I can keep playing this game, right, where I continue along. And, okay, that's not gouging now, but I, I'm leaving space, so I definitely could get more of this edge. So it's a guessing game. And on this simple part, not very painful because there's just a couple of things to tweak in. But if I had many, many chamfers on a part, that would be a lot of um, tweaking, right? And what make what might make one chain not gouge, the value might make another chain continue to gouge. So you start to create many, 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 many 2D contour chamfer toolpaths with different shortened values and such. Um, and one of the questions I see, someone's asking me how I'm doing this magical thing without going into backplot. Uh, so uh, Analyze Toolpath was introduced a couple of releases ago. And you can display your tool and your holder, control opacity, and any display toolpath on the screen, we will snap to it. You can just slide along and you can click anywhere and set it there. And you got your, your op, your feed, your spindle, what kind of move it is, is coolant on or off. And if I go to a point, you even get the position of that point you know, and such. So really cool. That's a G3 arc move. There's the radius. Um, you know, I personally forget it's there at times because I'm an old habit is to go into backplot, right? And you slide around and all that. But you've got this analyze toolpath, which is just a little bit easier. It's got a nice feel. You can slide along. And so that's what I'm using. So let's do this a better way, right? So here's a model champ for toolpath. And the model champ for toolpath, it took as input a chain. But it automatically understands that that chain came from a solid. 
So it consumed the solid. It aware it made itself aware of the solid. You can see what it's thinking about. It's like, yeah, I, I see this, the toolpath saying. I know this is here. I know it's here. I say, okay, good. Side clearance. This is the distance you want the side of your chamfer tool to stay away from any obstacles within this body. So I want to clear by 10 thou. The cut parameter page is dirt simple. Very similar to the 2D chamfer. I come in, I say what size I want it to be, the top offset. I got some lead in, lead out. I've got some very simple linking and I get a simple result. There it is. And we come in here and again, you can see I'm entering in right about there and you can see how nice and close I am to that wall. I'm 10 grand away. And I didn't have to do any workaround or shortening, it just did it. And there it is. And that tool will run all the way across and be just as safe on the other side. So that's about as much as I could safely chamfer coming within 10 grand of this solid. And that's the beauty, that is the beauty of this tool pet. That's what it does. That's what it does for you. Here's another example on a model with a chamfer. So this model has a chamfer, right? Sometimes you have a chamfer, sometimes you don't, okay? So I had explicitly tell this toolpath, you know, put a 50 here, 50 thou chamfer. But for this one, it's been modeled in already. So when I go in, I tell the system, the chamfer width is zero. I've already selected the correct location for my tool, which was this chain. I happen to chain the top rail. Now, there's value in you defining the top or the bottom. I defined the top, which means when I come on this page, you know, and I say top offset, that's the top of my tool from my chain. So I I chain the top of the chamfer so I could control this full diameter right above that edge. If I want to control like the tip, a definite value, you know, below the bottom of this, I want to chain the bottom of it. So you have real nice control depending on which edge you chain and which edge you choose to control your offset from. That's fantastic control. And this um, chamfering, when, when there's a chamfer on the part, um, there's less work for Mastercam to do when it calculates the toolpath because the model is an accurate shape to gouge check against, right? Obviously don't hit this model, but this is a strange situation, right? Because we're kind of telling the toolpath, well, I do want you to gouge this model here, you know, gouge it here in this area, but but don't gouge it here. So this is a heavier calculation. So if you have parts with chamfers, you might see a little bit of a lighter processing time and you might see it think a little bit longer when you have these sharp edges. All right, so that's conceptually what's going on. So let's look at a real world example, right? Let's take a look at this example here. So just like that previous example, I want to put a chamfer on this yellow gold base. So I took my 2D contour and we came in and I chained, you can see where my chain starts and it runs across and it ends in a similar location. And that's because this chain is flat and planar. These edges here uh, start to rise up. So I just chained the flat planar section Plus, I knew I couldn't chant for this anyway. I would gouge this wall. So this is my 2D chant for this is what I'm trying to do. And let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how that's going to cause trouble. So we'll go to analyze toolpath. And obviously, I'm in the same predicament where my tool will gouge. So now I got to play the game, right, and shorten it. And I don't want to play that game. So we go to the model chamfer. Here's the result. 
And if I put my tool here and I kind of move in, you can see there are no issues with gouging. Here's a good view for it, right? No issues, staying away, no worries, clear sailing, all right? So let's get into the details. Let's get into the weeds. This is a nice result. Of course it's a nice result because I made it a nice result. But let's look at some of the technology I used to get this. First of all, lead in, lead out. This is not the same processing code as the 2D contour. This is gouge checked processing code. It makes sure that this motion and this motion are not violating anything. I have this option called fitting distance and I have it set to 0 0.05. I'm gonna copy this toolpath. I'm gonna to turn that off so you can see what happens without it. And then we'll explain exactly what it does. And this result will look strange, but it's a very smart result. So there it goes, putting my pass on, and wow, what in the world is that, right? I'm gonna turn this toolpath on with it, okay? I want you to notice. So with no fitting, I get this plunge move, and, and here's my toolpath right here, right there. When I turned fitting on, I got this. Look where the blue is. It's way over here, way over there. Let's turn on my, this might help. Turn on our point there, and let's go ahead and, that is small, right? So let's take a, let's bump those up for you so you can see them nice. There we go. I can see that much better. All right, so that's where the blue, that's where the cut starts, that's where the entry is. But on this one, it cuts farther back. And this one, it's more to the left. If I turn them both on, you can see. What fitting does is it says, look, in, an, in, in, in the interest of fitting the requested arc in, you are allowed to trim the chamfer motion back, but don't trim more than 0.05 off. I could not safely arc in here. I would have gouged the wall. So it just plunged down because that was safe. When I said turn fitting on, it said, oh, I'll just trim a little bit back and then this arc can happen. That's what fitting does. And you can put, you could say, look, you could trim up to a half inch if you want, but remember, it's going to remove that much off the beginning and end of your chamfer toolpath, you know, possibly, right? It might only need to trim a small value. That's the max. It doesn't trim 0.5 and it doesn't trim 0.05. It only trims as much as it needs to, but that's the max you're allowing it to trim up to. So that's the wiggle room to try to let these two things fit. So it did trim because I got the arc and I know it trimmed less than 0.05 off. But let's take a look at this result. What's going on up here? Okay, so if I go to a top view though, it's gonna look like it makes good sense, right? I've got my, I got this tangent line into my cut, right? The arc couldn't fit. This radius couldn't fit safe. So it eliminated it. But if I was requesting compensation in control, right? For example, you know, you 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 need you need that line to enable uh, cutter compensation. You need a line move. So if I was to just plunge straight down, there's no line to turn compensation on. So when it retracted up to this safe location, it was able to accommodate my line. That's why I put the line there. It's a 2D, it's a competent control you know, support item. It looks strange, I know, but that's what it's doing. It's trying to be smart. But when I had fitting on, I was able to get the arc and the line, so no problem. 
So that's master cam trying to accommodate and get that line in there in a safe spot so compensation can be enabled and disabled on a tool path if you if you need it. If you don't care about that because you're not in control or anything with your comp, you can just, you know, if you don't like that result, you could put a zero here. Say, I don't want a line, and you're not going to get a line. It'll just plunge down wherever it's safe and start your chamfer. You don't have to have that that compensation line up there. And you'll see this result here. There she goes, making sure everything's safe. And there it is. So that would be the best it could do without any fitting or trimming. You get no arc on, no arc off, no line, no nothing, right? So let's cause a problem. So I'm going to put a solid in the way, right? So let's talk about linking. So obviously, when I chain the solid, it knew this solid was here, right? Let's go back in and show you that. This toolpath knows that that's there, but it doesn't know that this is here or anything else on the screen. It only knows that the solid that you chained is on the screen. Well, we support avoidance model. Avoidance model. I want to add this. And I want to stay away from that, you know, clear that by 100 or clear that by 50. And then I can update. And I can make the toolpath aware of anything on the screen by adding it as avoidance. So clamping, fixturing, whatever you might have, you can ask it to be aware of it. Then the linking, the leads, the fitting, everything will accommodate. And you'll see it. It does, in fact, bring it up. And the same thing happened here. So now we have a, a double thing. So now we have a lot happening. The arcs all of a sudden can't fit because this was the one that had the arcs because this is in the way of the arcs. So it retracts high enough, still gives me my comp lines if I want them and goes along its merry way. Now, if I want those arcs down here, what do we do? We say, okay, lead in, lead out. I'll give you more leeway here. You can trim up to a quarter inch off. I really want those arcs. And I can update and let's see if that's enough. That should pull it back far enough. It's calculating. It's going to clear our obstacle. And we'll talk about that next. How? What did it clear this by? There we go. So this case, I got my arc ends, but this little line move here would have brought it close enough to gouge this. So the line still happened up in the air. So again, you know, there's a lot of intelligence going on here. And if I don't want that line because I'm just competent computer, I can, of course, turn that off. I don't want the line. I just want those two arcs and a simple wrap it over. Or I could have shortened that line length, right? Or I could have made the arc, um, I could have made the arc smaller. You know, it's whatever you want to adjust to make things fit, you can, you can adjust. I just chose to turn the lines off. I get this simple result. Heck, I think I even could say a 25%. But what if I made the sweep 120? More sweep should curl the arc away from the obstacle and maybe still uh, accommodate those tangent lines, right? So you just think about what you're doing. You got settings, and there's a lot of different ways to, to get what you want if you stop and think about things. In that case, they didn't like it, so the curl was too much. We'll go back down to the 90. Boom. So let's talk about what makes this uh, clearance height uh, safely move above that obstacle. So we'll go and we'll look at the linking page. There isn't much there, but we'll explain what's going on on that page. So let's get our result back up here with the clearance. There we go. Got our lines up there, everything. I'm going to go back to zero here for when we get out of here. So linking, what's happening here? Three simple settings. You got a feed plane that's above your cut. That's an incremental value above your cut. You got a retract. That's an incremental retract. So that's telling the tool, look, just pull, just retract 100 thousandths away from where you are. Just pull up 100 and move across the part. 
and then the clearance is an absolute value that happens at the beginning and the end of the toolpath. And that's all this does. The intelligence is built behind this and behind this though. If this value is not high enough and it would hit something, it will go above it. It will raise, it will rise above that obstacle. Now the distance to clear it by, it will look at, of course, your clearance value here, and it will also take this number because it figures, well, you said absolute value of 2.5, but I'm going to hit something. So I'll make sure I clear it by at least this value. And it does also look and make sure you have something set here. So it's it does something smart, something logical. It doesn't rip through a part. It will clear the part. Now this, if you pull 100 grand up and I was to just move over, I would hit this thing. So I can't just pull up 100 and move over. It sees the obstacle and it uses this value here, this clearance, this retract value, as the value to clear this by. And it's clearing, what's really clearing is this value, of course. So it's it should be 150 above that obstacle. So you don't have to worry about this. This takes care of itself. Give yourself that retract where you desire, which was, there's my 2.5 absolute. But if you happen to make a mistake or something, you're protected. And here's your, I wish to just pull back a small value, whatever, 250. But if that's going to cause a problem, don't worry, it's going to clear your obstacles. So you're going to get these varying retract heights on a part that is complex. But you're safe and you're always safe. And these lead in, lead outs always ensure safe, safe and safe. No gouging. And that's what makes this model chamfer toolpath uh, unique. You give it some values and some things, and then it kind of has some intelligence built into it to kind of protect you from that point forward. So don't overthink things. Don't overthink that retract height. It's like, well, God, I, if I put 0.25, I know I'm going to hit these other things over here. Who cares? Just put 0.25. And wherever that's safe, it will happen. And wherever it's not safe, it will still use that value to clear the obstacles. You know, and there it goes doing its thing. There it is. So anything I put in its way, I'm safe. And and that's that's kind of what makes this model chamfer toolpath work. Okay. So you got this fitting, the concept of trimming the toolpath back up to this max value in an effort to fit your lot, your arc and your line. Your line in is, is smart. It tries to accommodate. It always tries to output itself somewhere safe so that you can compensate. You can turn your comp and control on and off. In the toolpath, you can't just start on an arc move. So we try to be smart and always give you that line. You could put zero when you don't really care for the line. If you don't need that line, like you're just competent computer anyway, you don't need the line, you put a zero. Okay. And then on the linking page, these are intelligent, they're safe, they're going to do something sensible, something smart, they're going to clear things, they're not going to run through anything. You've got your side clearance to help um, the beginning and the end of the chain start as efficiently as they can. You're going to let your tool come this close to within your the uh, side of the tool and your solid. And if there's anything else you're concerned about that's not part of the solid you chained, you can add that as avoidance. This could be surface, solid, mesh, it doesn't matter, and give that a clearance. So that's what makes the model chamfer toolpath tick. So let's switch gears. Let's start talking about chaining, and we'll do it with this toolpath. So the first thing I want to show is these two buttons. Remember, this used to say face. Now it says C plane. I want to show you something. If I'm set to 3D and I'm set to my, my edges and I hold shift because I want to go tangent and I click here, it runs around and, it and notice it ran past here and it ran up here. All right, so let me undo that. Let me go into my settings. This chaining tolerance here is fair game for solids and wireframe. That was a change made, I believe, in 2021. Um, but if you're any, if you were 
aware of this tolerance in here, this was only for wireframe chaining. But now it's sensitive to wireframe and solid edge chaining. So if I loosen this, it does affect both solid chaining and wireframe chaining. So I'm just going to loosen it and try again. Shift click here. Look at that. It ran all the way around. And you could not do that with a solid model in past releases. The problem was, I believe the problem was right here. You can see there's a little imperfection in the solid, and I got past it. You could never get past this in the past. You had to convert all this to wireframe. So first thing to point out, that is affecting solids as well. In addition to that, when I hold shift to go along all tangent edges, this is the tangency tolerance. The edges need to be within five degrees of each other, which is pretty loose, so you shouldn't have any problems. But you have the ability to lock this to zero if you want, uh, but that's your tangency tolerance, okay? A couple things there. But more importantly is remember that I only wanted to chain what was flat here because you can't chamfer these 3D chains. So I'm gonna unselect that. I'm in 3D mode, which means it can go wherever it wants, up and down and any which way. But if I say C plane, this chain is only allowed to run in the current construction plane. So if I click here, notice it ran along there and it stopped right here because that's the only part of this edge that you just saw go all the way around that lies flat in the current top construction plane. So that is awesome because it saved me from running along, along, along and stopping in here. I said, just get everything that's flat, anything in the C plane. Okay, I'm going to unselect. When I am set to, um, I'm going to go back to 3D, loop mode, a couple of changes here. Number one, I could get that loop. Right, I could get that or that. I can get that face or the chamfer, right, or this, or that, or that. That's crazy, right? Also, notice the preview as I move my mouse. That's new. If I just click here, that's what I get. You will not see that pop-up dialog that has the other button to toggle between the two faces that share the edge I picked. We've just made this, and just move, move. Just move back and forth and you get which one you want. To make it even better though, because here's this one, this one, this one. If I turn seaplane mode on, again, I can't pick a loop that doesn't lie in the construction plane. That one does, it lies in the current construction plane, but that chamfer face doesn't, and this obviously, this wall face doesn't. So I can only chain things that are flat in this current construction plane, which is nice when you're 2D machining because that's most of the time what you want. You want the flat chain. 3D mode goes crazy. It'll pick anything. C plane mode locks you in to your C plane. So use that to your advantage. Like if I'm in 3D and I click edges like here, look, it stopped because there's a fork in the road doesn't know which way to go because it can go down, back it up. It can go down a little bit here, you know, back it up. I'm going to unselect it. I'll hold shift and I'll click here. It still has to stop because it doesn't know if I want to go down here or down here or straight here. Three choices. Unselect. But I'm going to say no. I'm going to lock you down to the C plane. Hold shift. And it went all the way around to whatever was within the C plane. Now, since I held shift, right, this isn't tangent. If so, it kept going tangent to here. So this is obviously an issue with the way this solid was put together. But you see that had this solid been clean, it would have ran all the way around whatever's flat and in my construction plane, just like it did here when I said shift click here, tangent, 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 tangent. And then that's where it was tangent, but it violated the seaplane request, so it stopped. So it, these are very, very useful now, very, very useful, more so than the way it used to be with the face option here. 
And the loop chain, uh, you have far better control of it. You'll always get what you want. Even if you're in 3D, you get that nice preview, so you shouldn't have to make um, uh, get the wrong one anymore and have to hit that other button. Okay, so a couple of couple of new chaining things right there. So let's switch parts. Let's grab this part here. So region chaining and dynamic mill. So I'm going to say dynamic mill. And what I want to do is I want to chain. Here, let's do this because it's maybe it's hard to see. We'll um, we'll lighten up this face right here. There she is. That's what I'm after. I want to machine that. And in previous releases, you know, I could come in and chain it, of course. So there's my C plane. I'll grab my loop. And, uh, you know, I want to stay inside of it, right? That's what I really want to do. That protects the boss. And that protects uh, this wall. And I just want to have this edge be uh, overlapped and this edge be overlapped. So I could define it as air. And I could say I have, so I'll do edges here and I'll, I'll shift click for tangency. Ooh, what happened there? It, 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 it kept running because I was set to C plane and I didn't want that behavior. So I set myself to 3D and it will stop at every fork in the road. So you'll start to learn how to use these, right? So there's my air chain and I'll preview. Now I could do that, no problem in previous releases. But what I could not do in previous releases was have more than one, more than one air chain. Now we can. And that's the change. It supports more than one air chain. And don't worry about this gap here. That gap is there because I had a first pass offset uh, set modal. So we'll just I don't want to confuse anybody, so we'll get back in there. There it is, see? So multiple air chains is new. And it doesn't matter what kind of part or how many. Here's another part, dynamic mill. I would like to machine uh, this loop out here. And I've got air. My air is going to be edge chain, that, that, and this more than one preview and then let me see what my top view and it must be my yep that's my plane my plane wasn't set right so the chains thought they were overlapping and that means i got to just rechain them real quick so we want this loop and these edges that edge and that edge and this edge to here. Oops, I don't know what happened there. What do I got set? I got something strange set going. Oh my lord. There we go. <laughs> clear, clear, clear. Why is this reset? There you go. Stay there. Loop. And we'll do it again. They're still there. See, it's looking down the front plane, right? So all those chains are just all garbled on top of each other, it doesn't understand. And it keeps going back to front, so I don't know why it keeps going back to front. Something's not right there. That's interesting. I think a worker on there will just to be set to WCS here. And we'll just get past this. So I'll go to air since I'm already in edges mode and we'll try this again because I'm stubborn. And loop. But look at all this chaining. It's so it really doesn't like it. I'm not sure why. No. Something's going on with that little guy. I don't know what it is. Let me come back to this one. So this can be a simple chaining experience as well. We'll come back to that other example. I have it in another part file. Now you notice that I had to come in here and say, you um, know, loop, which was nice, right? It's just a single selection. That's kind of nice. But then I had to go and chain this, and then I had to chain this, and I had to walk it past the sharp corner. So it was click and click and click and click. 
And that's a lot of clicking, right? So what I can do is use these automatic modes down here, right? This one is says to chain the open edges of a face. So I pick this and it grabs them one single click instead of having to do multiple clicks. And then I got it. That's some new stuff. At some point, this was introduced. It changed a little bit in 2021. I think it was there in 2020. It changed a little bit. There's this concept of shared edges as well. So let's move on to a different part. So the point of this part was just to show that, hey, you can now pick multiple air edges. And that was a very, very popular request. So let's get into some solid chaining nuances. All right, so I'm gonna go to that sample block here. Now I'm gonna go back in. So here's how the experience could have been, right? So with, with auto chaining, machine, um, this loop, and air, all open edges of this, and boom. So single click, single click, done, right? Cancel, cancel. Another part, right? Dynamic mill, machine. Uh, ooh, I got no, I'm going to use Facebook. Just to, so machine that. And, uh, you know, done. And then for the air, I want the open edges of it. Done. Preview. Right? Machine. Rechain. Uh, I, want, um, I want that. I'm not going to pick this face because I'll get the inner. So I'll make sure I pick the outer loop. And then I'll say, okay. Right. And then I'll clear the air. So I just have those two things. Right. And then I say air. It's the beauty of this option. Single click, single click. Boom. Right. So it's very simple, simple, simple chaining when you're using those automatic functions. Again, how about so loop and face are enabled C plane this time, right? So I want that and that and that. And then for my air, I want the outer open edges of this and this and this and preview. Right? I don't have to run around and do all this chaining. Now somebody asked if we can limit the air region from outside I, I i don't understand it exactly but if, if you're asking if you could keep it out of the space over here you 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 can because like if there's an obstacle there and your air goes into where there would be an obstacle i'm going to accept this yes but you have you can you know, i can do that just like i could also do this so i guess the answer is yes and no um I can add that avoidance wireframe and that will interact and keep me out of that area where my air went into, see? Just like I could the opposite of that, right? Get rid of it would have been to say, well, contain, but, but, but you got to stay inside of here. See, so it can only machine this little bit here and here. So you got the avoid if this air happened to be, but remember, just because the air is here doesn't mean the tool's going to go. The tool's never going to go over here. It's never going to go over here. It's only going to go close to this material to get into it. So it's only ever going to go here, somewhere around close to here. It's never going to go up here. There's no metal there. There's only metal here. But people, customers forget that we have this containment region as well, which is basically a boundary around the solution. This is the solution. And then you say, no, only machine inside of this. and it clips it all, all right so a couple a couple of quick things there so that's some of this advanced um this advanced chaining we have here these solid options down here right so let's talk about the other ones so let's go to a different part back to our sample block part let's go back to the sample block here we are so again 
Uh, how about a 2D contour? And I want to machine the wall of these four corner pieces, right? So I could say, how about the outer shared edges? Shared edges of the outer. Bam, done and done. One click, got all of those. You can imagine how useful that would be on a complex part, right? But we have one. How about this? I got to contour all of these. Holy moly, right? That's a ton of chaining. Look at all the chaining. No, not a problem. Contour the outer the um the outer shared edges, right? And right? Notice the chaining direction already set up for compensation left. Right? And I can go yep and yep and yep. It's like no, that's crazy, right? No, 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 no. I want to undo all these, right? So if I hit this, I could do those one at a time, but that's silly also. So hang on, let's just stop the madness here, right? Boom, boom. First of all, it's mad to go through and do all this. So I'm not, that's crazy. It's also crazy to undo this one at a time. No, that's what this is. Display all the selection arrows because that lets me pick the one I want to work with because I might want to remove him. Whatever arrows are shown are what we are on selecting. So when I say show all arrows, I can just say unselect all, all right? This is why we change this up. Look, I mean, you can go through here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, I'm just gonna grab them all. We'll talk about how I just did that in a second, right? But uh, maybe I don't want that one. Show them all. And this guy here, yep, don't want him. And maybe that guy there, I wanted to back up a little bit. Look at that. No, don't want him. Actually, I don't want any of them. Turn all the arrows on. I'm not going to pick one this time. I just don't want them all. So that's some cool interactions you have there, okay? So how did I do that, right? If I hold control and shift together and I pick a face, it looks for all the faces of the identical shape. So bam, and I'm gonna turn my edges off and then you and you, look at that. Now, if I wanted a conventional mill of these walls, I could select all and I could reverse them all. Now I would be cutter comp right, cutter comp left. And notice it missed four of them. What happened? Well, I think we know why it missed this one, right? Because this face does not match this face. Well, it also missed. Uh, this one here because there's a design flaw in this part. And if I get the right view, you can see it. You can see right here, it's not tangent. So the, the, the designer designed this wrong. It's That's a sharp corner right there, but all these are nice and clean and tangent. So this bottom face is not identical to this bottom face. So that was, this is a very accurate result. This is true. But if I want this, I can just add it course so I can add that one and add that one because those are all the design flaws and if I really want this one of course I could say edges and I can just um, you know hold uh, shift and get that guy and you know back him up and I got him right so that's what this squiggly dude is turn them all on pick the one you want to edit or unselect now if this is where it gets strange, right? So I, what I wanted to do is back this arrow up. So I pick him. Notice these are grayed out. Like, oh man, I can't do that. They're only grayed out because this mode's not turned on, see? So I got to turn this on and then they are awake. All right, so you got to pay attention to that. If you're like, oh man, I just wanted to do, you know, I just wanted to back this dude up and I got him. It's like, oh, grayed out. Well, you're you're not in that mode. Turn that mode on. Do what you need to do. 
right? Heck, you can even do dynamic and you can um, you can move it back here. Now that's where you're gonna end. All sorts of cool stuff, right? Unselect, all of them unselect, right? And, and any part that has common uh, common features, right? Like this guy here, I wanna, I don't know, contour, loop, right, loop. I'm gonna hold Control Shift, pick this loop. It finds all the other faces that are the same shape as the face that took that loop off of, and I got it. Reverse them all. Loops are cool because I can move the start point, all right? So I can pick the one, just edit him. You know, now he's different than those. Unselect. So this is fantastic stuff here, okay? There are some limitations, though. If I pick a face like that, I, I can't move the start point. I can't do dynamic. It, the face doesn't support it. Only edges and loops. I could reverse it, right? But I can't move that start point right now. And I can't even g gain edge control of it. Only uh, loops and edges. But remember, if I accept this, and I really need that control. I can go right back into the chain manager and remember this stuff. Face convert to edges. Now it's not a face chain anymore, is it? It's an edges chain, which means I can edit it to get right back here. And then that will let me uh, you know, move the start point or you know, reverse it, um, you know, back it up, all that good stuff. You get all you get all the editing here. Put him back where he belongs. Flip it, move him forward. You know, so there's always a way to skin the cat. All right, close. So other automatic options, you know, to point out while we're here together, is uh, bosses. I want all the bosses of a face. I right, got the bosses. Unselect or cavities. I want all cavities. Grabbed all four, blind, and through. On select, I just want the blind cavities of this face. Okay, or I just want the through cavities of that face, and it grabs them all. And there they are. So these modes make it very easy, you know, with loop to do some mass chaining on parts, right? Back to the panel part. You want to dynamic mill all these? You got it easily. Dynamic mill, machine, loop. Boom, got all the loops. That makes sense, right? We understand why we missed those two. I don't care, got it. And then there's some open air, isn't there? Air, open edges, control. Shift, click, gets all the open edges, and preview. Let that preview build, and there you go. Your dynamic mill and all those lickety quick, no messing around with time consuming chaining. And I promise you, I promise all of you, that in MasterCam 2022, this even gets better. And that public beta will be available sometime after the new year. And we built on this intelligence, just like MasterCam 2020 introduced some of this stuff uh, back here, um, right? We tweaked this in 2021, we made the loop, we made all this stuff bigger and smarter and better in the last two or three releases. And you're gonna see the climax of all that work in MasterCam 2022. Um, so, so stay tuned. And there's more chaining improvements coming, um, you know, beyond what we're just showing here. Um, so, so those are some of the, some of the um, some of the subtleties. Uh, you know, don't forget that you do have the ability, like, you know, here's a loop. You know, I can convert the loop to edges if I want to get edge, you know, edge control, and I can even open it from. I can remove that from here. See, or I could choose to edit it and get back into here. 
So you're 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 never really locked down with the past mentality used to be you had to delete a chain or recreate a chain. Not anymore. You can convert face to loop, loop to edges. You can edit these chains, move their start points, you know, select them all and mass chain and all sorts of interesting things. And what I don't point out is the um the, the wireframe chaining has followed suit with some of these behaviors as well when it comes to um, when it comes to the C plane and the uh, 3D. You, you, you got the same behavior happening here. You know, if I'm in if I if I'm in 3D and I click, you know, it's I I can I can still control an open wireframe chains as well. Now, if there was a fork in the road there, it would have reacted to that fork in the road. I didn't have one. But if I had something like that, you know, you would see uh, some reaction with the wireframe chain, right? It, so you get the same business with wireframe chaining as you had in solids. You know, back it up, go this way. So some of that stuff is also within these functions. And there's all your control down here. So we're bringing them, uh, you know, closer together, closer together. And remember the settings. Remember that this is solid chaining and this is wireframe chaining. And um, hey, Dave, we've got that's a couple. All I got. Of, if uh, if you want to jump back to your other part with all the the control shift click, there's there's two good questions that I think um, can tie sure. together really well um, about the the sorting order of the the faces that are selected. Will that will the will the sorting order of your selections come out in the G code? And will um, that control shift selection um select the features that are similar at different heights and plane orientations uh heights and plane orientations i not a hundred i don't want to just say yes but we can do this how about we do this um boop there we go all right and then we Want to chain that? Oh, we don't want to open up our tool. Chain, rechain all. Give me the outer edges. Control Shift click. Nope. So you do have a depth map. You got a depth map. Now I'm in C plane mode, so let me go 3D and Control Shift click. There you go. Yep, we we made it sensitive to the C plane and the 3D. So I got them both there. On I'll unselect them. If I go C plane. It only grabs, that's the only one at that depth, right? And these are the only ones at that depth. So you've got a nice Z filter, yes. Um, I can't do a quick check for different planes, but I'm, I'm, we'd have to just try it. You know, I'll have to draw a square block, put a pocket on all four sides, see what happens. I'm not sure, but this works. Um, what else? Chain order, somebody asked, right? Yes. Okay, so in 2021, uh, I'm not guaranteed this chain order, like, like the 2D contour follows your chain order. Uh, but I know like dynamic mill will not follow the order you chain the machining regions in. In Mastercam 2022, the dynamic mill uh, will follow the chaining order of the machining regions but in order of highest Z to lowest Z. So there has been an improvement made. These are all at the same Z level. So whatever order I chain these in, they will machine in, in Mastercam 2022. But if I happen to chain all these and this one, and this was the last chain. So this was one, two, three, four, all the way down. It will still machine this one first, because it's at a higher Z level. Then it will do these in order. But if like four of these were at that height, it would chain this, 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 this. It, it would machine these in order at that Z height, and then these in order at their Z height. So there is this hierarchy of Z height, but it does respect the chain order for all chains at that common Z height. So there, there was a change in 2022. Um, to improve the the order the chains are executed. <clears throat> Anything else uh, that we'd want to 
answer here live, Chad? Makes sense. Uh, I think that pretty much cleans up the questions. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope this has been helpful. Um, you know, we'll be posting this video. You can watch it all you want up on YouTube. And if you think of other questions, you can comment on the YouTube video and we'll do our best to get those questions answered as well. I appreciate everybody's time. That's all I have, Chad. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time.